Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Goldwing Man bringing you another vlog, something I do from time to time. A um, bit of a novice for me, I'm not serious about it. This is my Honda 2018 Goldwing Manual Edition. I've only had it for about six months and it was a demo model when I traded it in and what I'm going to do today is give you some hints and tips which is how I usually start my vlogs and then after that just go for a short ride and yeah see see what comes to mind see what I might talk about as usual if you're looking for something exciting it's probably not the vlog for you but if you're a gold wing enthusiast then yeah join me for the hints and tips and for the ride so last time I gave some hints and tips I recommended a little toolkit that you might want to carry with you in case of emergency and I mentioned the Vera Zyklop ratchet set and I think it's a German brand so the W is pronounced V so that's Vera and in here we have a ratchet some extensions and you've got a this is the um, metric system from 5mm all the way up to 13 socket sets then you've got some torque screws some Phillips heads and some hex ones and the hex ones are good because most of the screws on on the bike engine are hex and the three that come with the kit fit most of them except for one or two really large ones so that's really a handy toolkit to have uh, it's quite compact very well made very robust very high quality and um, yeah the there is a another toolkit that comes close also by Vera and that's this one here which I also like so I don't know in terms of the difference which is better I guess it's just a case of personal preference but I really like this one it also has a little ratchet it's a really miniature ratchet but it's very sturdy very powerful just hold it in your hand like that and it will do anything I mean you might need to put a PVC pipe on it or something to get some leverage if, if your hand doesn't give you enough leverage but it's really certain it can take it and that also comes with um, 5 to 13 millimeter sockets but it's also got this you put the switch up there and you can pop out very similar accessories you've got torque Phillips head I can't remember what these gold ones are but some variant not the same as Philip heads and you've got your hex screws and this really um, amazing little ratchet um, that yeah I can't speak highly of as well as a screwdriver handle here so between the two kits you effectively get the same thing there's this one and then there's this one I think between the two it's pretty hard for me to choose I like them both for different reasons I like this one just for that really mini tiny ratchet you can get it into some tight squeezes with it and I like this one because it has this rotating head where you can just pivot turn it into a screwdriver and or a ratchet so um, do you really need a rota rotating head? I, I don't know, I don't do enough mechanics. Um, but with either system, you know, you'd be pretty much getting the same thing. So 
yeah, make your choice. The other hint and tip I'd like to give you is what to do when you get a puncture. So obviously being on a motorbike you don't have a spare, you don't want to be in the middle of nowhere. So I wanted to talk about a Dynaplug solution which I think is the best solution on the market. If you look at the Dynaplug, if you get a um, puncture, you can repair this um, on the roadside with a Dyna plug, and yeah, I'm not going to go into it too much, but um, here it is. That's this is one particular model in the range. This is the Dyna plug. Dyna Plug Pro. I think this is more suited to cars because you get a lot of leverage from it. But basically what you do is you put one of these conical um, bullet looking things with this rubber stem. You just punch that into the tyre, pull out and it's fixed. That's after you remove the screw or nail that's gone into the tyre. And it's that simple and it's a permanent fix. So if you want to know more about Dyna Plug, um, I just recommend you YouTube it and there are videos that will do a much better job than I am of explaining how it works but I think it's a must if you're going to do long trips. There is a variant of that so um, which I forgot I think it's somewhere in the side bag here and this is probably the one that um, I'll keep with me on the bike so this one's good for cars and motorbikes this one's just especially for motorbikes so when you're looking at the dyna plug range make sure you get get the one you want um, like i said this one will give you more leverage because this variant here um, it has a soft head there it's it's not made of aluminium and kind of pushing it in you get a little less leverage but on a motorbike tire you don't need it if you've got a <coughs> excuse me if you've got a um, car tire on your motorbike then you might want to go for the pro extreme what i've also done is you can just buy a bag and kit yourself out so um, obviously once you remove the nail or obstacle you need to put some air in your tire so you should carry some of the co2 cylinders um, and after you've re repaired the puncture you can I've got three cylinders here that should be more than enough to to get enough pressure to at least get me to a petrol station um, and then I've got the little attachment here that and you can buy all these separately I just happen to find an online kit where you can just plug that into there and there's a little somewhere in here a little extension that allows me to fit the whole thing onto the tube onto the valve on the tire and put the air back in so there's that and I've also got a multi-tool as well because if you've got an obstacle in the tire you can use use the pliers on the multi-tool to pull it out and um, yeah when you and this this contains a little bullets inside as well part of the kit so i'll show you what they look like if i can get them out so these are the bullets this this silver part just plugs into here and these these conical bronze looking bullets go into the end there sorry into the end here and you put that on like that and just punch it in and your repair is done um, but yeah sorry for the bad explanation uh, but yeah just go um, look that one up so dyna plug and um, yeah kit yourself out with some co2s as well something to remove the obstacle and uh, this this little tap attachment that you can get just to make it easier to connect to the valve 
anyway that's the uh, hints and tips for today now we'll go for a little ride and I'll just talk about what comes to mind so see you soon okay folks just in case you're wondering where we are I'm at Lake Burley Griffith which is in Canberra Australia Canberra in case you don't know is the capital city of Australia and it's in the Australian Capital Territory which isn't a state it's a territory um, so yeah now we'll go for a quick ride and yeah we'll um, talk about whatever comes to mind I'll just start the bike up oh, one sec enjoy the view while I just um, relocate something see a couple of rowers on the lake this is only a fraction of the lake the lakes um, about 35 kilometers in circumference it's quite a big lake you can cycle around it, it takes about one and a half hours nice cycle uh, we're going to see parts of it on the way back home uh, which is Canberra City um, but yeah as I said it's a big lake even to go around it by bike might take a little while probably a good half an hour I guess so I hope you enjoy the scenery let's start her up it's quite warm today although we got thunderstorms expected this afternoon So, um, yeah, better get. I thought I'd better get some filming done while well, I've got some free time before the thunderstorms kick in. So, let's see. Might close the visor, hopefully, we'll get better sound. Although, today's not really a day for closing the visor. And we're off, finally. So yeah, this is part of the Lake Burley Griffith. You can see some of the lake to the left. It's just a tiny fraction of it. Nice of him to drive in the middle of the road. This is a two way just in case anyone's curious. I'm not meant to drive too fast around here. So what did I want to talk about? I might talk a little bit about my camera and recording setup for vlogging. It does take a bit of trial and error before you get it all right and depending on what equipment you buy so if you can afford it and you want to do some vlogs or try to try out some vlogging I would recommend you get the best action camera money can buy and I won't say the brand because I don't really want to promote the brand it's doing well enough by itself but it is pricey that's that's the only downside um, and yeah, if we thinking top of the range you also have to buy the recorder as an optional accessory so by the time you add it all up in Australian dollars you probably somewhere between 700 to 900 Australian dollars and uh, yeah it gets to be a bit pricey another alternative which is the route I went for the more thrifty consumer was to try and some, find something a bit cheaper but where the quality is good enough so if you're just recording for YouTube you can save money just by getting a 1080p 
you know, 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second, it doesn't really matter, whatever you prefer. But you don't need the Quad HD, um, it's early days yet for that technology and nearly all of YouTube's being recorded in 1080p, so all you need is a 1080p action camera, 30 or 60 frames per second, doesn't really matter again. And in my case, I went for the Kaiser Bass. I think it's K A I S E R B A A S, which is a German brand. And it's far, far cheaper than the more popular brands. And it has, and it's really good quality at the same time. And I've looked at quite a few other cheaper brands and for me the Kaiser Bass ticks all the boxes you can see the quality now because that's what I'm recording under and but again the only problem with at least the model I've got which is the X400 they've got newer models now I don't know what they're called but the model I got was the X400 it doesn't really have a microphone accessory it does have a built-in mic but it's certainly not Good, en good enough for vlogging um, by the time you put the waterproof case on it the built-in mic's not going to pick anything up and even if it did you'd have too much wind noise you just wouldn't get the quality so and it doesn't have a microphone port at least the model I've got which is one thing when you're vlogging yeah, you probably want to look, look out for an action camera that does have a microphone port or at least a microphone accessory um, but I found that with the action cameras, you're far better off buying a separate recording device anyway um, because you get better quality and again it works out much cheaper. So I got the Tascam, um, I'm trying to remember the model now, I think it's the Tascam DR10-L or 4-L can't remember I think it's a 10 L and it's a it's a miniature recording device you plug a microphone in and that's what I'm talking on now so I'm recording to a separate device than the camera and I'm not really using the built-in mic on the camera so at the end of the day I get better quality sound because I've got dedicated quality recording device and in post when you use your video editing software you just upload your video from your action camera and the sound from your sound recorder and you're done you put the two together and that's how I'm doing it anyway and it works out to be um, in my case if I went for the top of the range in Australian dollars I'm pretty sure I would spend a good $800 and that would be just for one camera. What I did with the K's the best, Bass, sorry, two cameras for around $200 and the Tascam DR10L was, that was a bit pricey, that was close to $300. So for $500 I got two cameras and a dedicated recording device so i probably saved at least two to three hundred dollars and i got two cameras whereas if you go for the top of the brand oh sorry top of the range action camera um yeah if you were to buy two cameras you'd probably go well over a thousand dollars having said that with any, usually with any action camera brand, any popular one anyway, you can buy older models. So that's another way of saving money. If you want to get a camera that's only 1080p, you don't have to buy the latest model that does Quad HD and you know 120 frames per second and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, here's more of the lake to the left. Again, just a fraction of it, some of it to the right. Uh, yeah, 
you don't don't have to buy the latest camera with all the whistles and bells get one of their older models your criteria should be 1080p and that that's probably about it and you need to sort out something for your voice recording and yeah in my case I prefer a separate recording device Tascam is definitely the recording device to get and you're done but if if that's too much for you you're not very technically minded or you just don't want the hassle then by all means get the top of the range it's, it's you know one complete kit it all plugs in together and it just works so um, yeah that might be an easier option for you although it's more pricey you definitely get both quality video and sound I don't know. but I'm really happy with my uh, Kaiser, Bass, Kaiser Bass and Tascam for voice recording, Kaiser Bass for camera recording. Really happy, it's a very thrifty solution and it's also high quality, so I'm good to go. I suppose I should say something about the Goldwing. This is, um, yeah, I'm really meant to be talking about gold wing I, I have given some hints and tips oh, something's going on in town today it looks pretty chock-a-block ahead so yeah what can I say I if you've listened into my previous vlogs you probably know that I wanted the DCT version of the gold wing that's the fully automatic dual clutch transmission but I got such a good deal on the trade-in uh, on this manual one I thought why not I'm I've only ever ridden manual motorbikes anyway and I'm really happy with it although you know if if I was buying and I didn't have to worry about a trade-in I'd definitely go for the automatic uh, it'd be just so much nicer than having to worry about changing gears all the time but having said that I'm perfectly happy with my manual, I've gotten used to it and um, yeah it's other, other than that it's pretty much the same bike as the D DCT. I, coming from another brand bike though, I did mention this also previously on some of my other blogs, I have found that you know, one thing's a bit weird about the Goldwing is I find the gearbox a little bit clunky doesn't bother me I'm, I'm used to it now but for some reason I thought that it would be so engineered that that it would just be a little click up and down <laughs> yeah it's clunky it's rackety sometimes it doesn't go in gear um, although most of that's me um, just getting used to the new manual transmission and now I'm used to it it's just not a problem anymore And I love the bike, it's got a lot of power, it really is a sports tour, you, you wouldn't call it a tourer, I reckon. It's got a lot of power. It's, compared to the previous generation Goldwing, the 2018 models upwards are a new generation, complete, complete redesign. Much more streamlined and lower profile in the body design. And they actually look like a sports bike. If, if you didn't know they were so big, you'd think it would be a Honda sports bike rather than a Tourer. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's been an interesting learning experience for me. Uh, although there is the older model Gold Wings, there's a lot I like about them as well. They're bigger, they're heavier, they've got a lot of luggage space. Well, when I say a lot of, they have, I might go this way. They have more luggage space than the new Goldwing, so a lot of people are complaining. They can't get two helmets in the boots of the new Goldwing, 2018 upwards. Um, but. Uh, you, people also find that 
if you've got one large one medium helmet you could probably get two of those in the in the boots um, otherwise I've got to let some air in this helmet I'm suffocating uh, otherwise you know it's it's um, for me it's not a problem I still think there's plenty of room for my purposes I can fit my large helmet in there I can fit my partner's medium helmet in there no problem but certainly if you had two large helmets that wouldn't be happening but then you have the the helmet latch on the that comes as an accessory with the in the toolkit and that just plugs into where the handrails are on the pillion seat uh, on the left side I think so if you could only get one helmet in the boot then you, you can just attach the other helmet to the side of the bike so I, I don't think it's worth worrying about other than that you've got plenty of space for luggage and that sort of thing so I think I would rather the sporty profile design than, than the older um, heavier higher profile design of the previous generation Goldwing if, if I had to choose between the two having said that I could be perfectly happy on a older Goldwing even a second hand Goldwing they're just built to such a high standard in the first place that um, it would always be an enjoyable bike almost no matter what year the bike was built if it's a Honda Goldwing because they have set the standard for cruisers that other brands are still playing catch up with so yeah what else can I talk about we're kind of in Canberra City at the moment just just heading home trying to beat the thunderstorms it's going to thunderstorm this afternoon or at least so the forecast says it will forecasts have been wrong before uh, so I'm guessing it'll come it's that time of the year so yeah I hope you've enjoyed the vlog and the hints and tips that you get at the beginning I think I have to put I'm not taking this vlog very seriously it's mostly a learning experience for me but I definitely have to put more effort into planning the vlogs at the moment I'm just kind of doing them off the cuff a bit spontaneously and yeah whereas these days you really have to put some planning into it if you want to keep the vlog interesting but yeah thanks for joining me and hopefully we'll catch up on the next vlog until then ride safe and live long see you next time